I'm going to talk about NOVA, the NOVA food classification, and how they use guilt by association to prove what they assume. So let's go through an example first of how this works. We're going to prove that Robin is a boy's name. In case you don't know, in English, Robin is a popular name both for girls and for boys. So suppose we have a task. We want to do something terrible like make an algorithm to predict what pronoun someone prefers to use based on his or her name. Note that this is considered very bad because of course you're supposed to ask the person and not just make an, assume, an assumption, but um, <laughs> let's suppose we're going to try to do that, okay? So we've got, for data, we've got a collection of pairs of names and the pronoun that happened to be used with it. So for example, maybe we had 123 cases of Angela and they all came with a she, and we had 42 cases of Charlie, and the vast majority of them were a he, a few of them were a she, et cetera, et cetera. And now, what are we gonna do to try to make an algorithm that will guess correctly the gender of people by their names? Well, here's a method that I think you'll agree is not that great, but <laughs> it could work. So we divide the names randomly in, into two equal halves of categories, and then we see which half is more likely to be he. And of course, you know, randomly, one of them is going to be more likely to be he. And if it's not significantly, statistically significant, then shuffle them again and do it until it is. And so then eventually we will get a category and we can say all of the names in that half should predict male. Um, note that if I were a data scientist working for you and I presented this solution, you should question your decision to hire me. <laughs> all right, here's something slightly better. So without peeking, we're going to, at the data results, right, we're going to select all the names that you're sure about and put them in the category you think is correct. And then all the ones that you're not sure about, let's just randomly distribute the, them into the categories sort of similarly to what we did before. And now, well, look, we may, we'll use those categories to make predictions, and most of the time they're correct. <laughs> so we must have done the right categories, right? We should easily see that there's something very wrong with this method, even though it got us a good result in terms of our predictions. Okay, here's a, here's a third method. <laughs> Without peeking, again, we're gonna select all the names that we're sure about, and we're gonna put them in the category we think is correct. And additionally, we're gonna take Robin, and we're gonna stick it in the he category because um, maybe we know about Robin Hood and um, Sir Robin in the uh, Knights of the Round Table. And then we'll randomly distri uh, distribute the others and observe that our predictions are usually correct. And there we have proven that Robin is a boy's name. <laughs> no self-respecting data scientist would ever do such a thing, right? Okay, now let's talk about NOVA, the food classification system. Here we have from their publication, uh, their examples of good foods, <laughs> unprocessed foods along the top, and the ultra-processed products below. Um, by their nature, they are unhealthy and should be grouped together and avoided, it says. How did they come up with these categories? Well, they used their intuitions to put together a heuristic. So we see the same kind of pattern. Robin is a boy and burgers are a health risk. I've underlined in their description of how they chose the ultra-processed category, things that I think are a little bit iffy. I'm not sure how they got in there. Carbonation, does that, is that necessarily unhealthy? What about packaging? I've seen packaged boiled eggs in the store. Should I avoid those? Spreads is very general. Cocoa drinks, <laughs> you know, it could mean some things that I would never touch it. It could mean something that I wouldn't mind at all. And definitely burgers, I have a strong objection to being in that classification. But then what they've done is they made these categories and then they set out a whole research agenda using these categories preformed to test either epidemiologically or even in randomized controlled trials to find out if giving people uh, the foods that come from the unprocessed category versus foods from the processed category are going to have better or worse health results. And then they use the results of that to say, look, 
our classification was correct. It's exactly the same as the thing we did with proving Robin as a boy. So just in 2020, there are at least, at least six, I stopped when I got to six of these studies that are using this categorization system and making conclusions that the categorization is correct. So here's two more, and here's two more. And here's an excerpt from one of them. It says, there is now a considerable body of evidence supporting the use of ultra processed foods as a scientific concept to assess the healthiness of foods within the context of dietary patterns and to help inform the development of dietary guidelines and nutrition policy actions. As a data scientist, I call BS. They have not proven that any one of the foods within their categories is actually a culprit. And yet, I'm sure that in the coming years, people will point to these studies and say, look, it's been proven. You might argue with it as a theory, but we have the proof. And I say that we don't. <laughs>